At 12, the night beat starts right now. And two big stories tonight. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf demanding answers after Bear County deputies fatally shot a mentally troubled combat veteran. His death prompting protests tonight. And Mayor Ron Nuremberg is calling for the release of body camera footage in the arrest of a black jogger. We start with the death of Damian Daniels. The combat veteran was shot twice by a Bear County deputy on Tuesday. Deputies were responding to a mental health call at his home. Sheriff Javier Salazar says Daniels was aggressive and initiated a struggle with deputies. They say Daniels reached for his weapon and that's when he was shot. The sheriff says his deputies did everything in their power to avoid using deadly force. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says it should have never happened, and he's asking for an independent review by the mental health department. We found no criminal history on this guy. He was in his home. He had a gun, which he certainly has a right to have a gun if he's in his home, in an altercation call, uh, calls there and uh, in, in the yard, and he died and was killed. So to me, something's wrong in how we handle that. Deputies had gone to Daniel's house in the days before for welfare checks. BCSO has a mental health unit, but the sheriff says they focus more on executing mental health warrants. The sheriff says he does support trying to find a way to improve how mental health calls are handled. Two veteran deputies and a trainee deputy are on administrative leave after this shooting. About 100 people showed up tonight at the Bear County Jail to protest Daniel's death. The group demanding answers and calling for change, holding signs that read, Damien deserves justice. One of the main goals protesters say is to decrease law enforcement funding and give funding to other programs. In this case, a program where mental health experts can respond to mental health calls. There's so many illnesses out there and so many possible reactions that it really should be somebody who's got a license and a degree and somebody who has an understanding of the human mind of mental illness to go out there because it's, it's too many people. It's too many people dying. Another incident that is getting attention tonight, the arrest of Matthias Ometu. San Antonio police say he matched a description of a suspect in a family violence call. So they stopped him as he was jogging and asked that he identified himself. They say he refused to do so. He was placed in handcuffs and police say he assaulted two officers. Mayor Ron Nuremberg wants the body cam footage of that arrest to be released publicly. The mayor noted Ometsu's arrest comes amid a national conversation about race and policing. That is uh, the backdrop of all these conversations, which makes this an extremely uh, important issue whenever it comes up. We have to treat these issues seriously. The mayor expects the footage to be released next week. The March on Washington even saw thousands come out to commemorate the 57th anniversary of Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. Many fighting for the same things their parents and even grandparents fought for during the civil rights movement. In attendance were family members of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey, and many others who are grieving loved ones lost at the hands of police, along with members of King's own family. My grandfather predicted this very moment. He said that we were moving into a new phase of the struggle. The first phase was the civil rights, and the new phase is genuine equality. Back in 1963, MLK was calling for an end to systemic racism, police violence against African Americans, and fair voting practices. High school football is back, but this year the rules for players and fans have changed. The outbreak of COVID-19 led school districts to create new safety measures to ensure this Friday night tradition continues. The night team Stephen Cavazos shows us how Lavernia ISD kicked off the season. It's the return of Friday night lights. The band, cheerleaders, and the fans. My son's a senior in the band. I'm pretty excited. It's good to see everybody out. It's good to see the community out. 
Lavernia High School hosting their first football game of the season and their first in a pandemic. If you feel comfortable staying home, stay home. If you feel comfortable going out, then it's okay to go out. The University Interscholastic League, otherwise known as UIL, provided guidance to school districts on the safest way to kick off the season. But because of COVID-19, fans that want to make their way inside the stadium must first get their temperature check. And once inside, more rules expected to be followed. The stadium is operating at 50% capacity. Stands have been broken up into sections to ensure social distancing. Band members are also spaced apart in the stands. And there's also limited capacity on the sidelines. Cheerleaders must wear masks if they're not able to be socially distanced. And the football players must do the same when they're off the field. So we're here, Friday Night Football, first game of the season. We're, uh, we're ready to go. Michael Duffick is a director of safety and security for Lavernia ISD. He says the district has been preparing for this day since June. Duffick hopes today's game will serve as an example of how to bring back a sense of normal during a time of so much uncertainty. And we're going to prove to prove to UIL and prove to the state of Texas that we can do this and let's get everybody back to normal. Now, Lavernia ISD's athletic director has been in contact with opposing teams to inform them of the protocols that are currently in place. Now, we're told that the school district is not enforcing people out here to be wearing masks, but it is encouraged. And Steve, we did get a chance to see the marching band take the field for the halftime show. And judging by the crowd's sense of reaction, it brought back a sense of joy for this community. Reporting live tonight in Lavernia, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. A little bit of normal in a time that's anything but. Thank you, Stephen. Well, for the first time in exactly two weeks, new cases in Bear County surpassed the 200 mark. The city is reporting 272 new cases. The total confirmed cases, 46,083. The seven-day average went up a little bit to 152. 13 more people died from the community. Those deaths happening between July 2nd and August 24th. The death toll sits at 780. The hospitalization rate continues to decline. 393 people remain in the hospital. That's the first time in a long time it's been below 400. That's down by 19. 196 people are in the ICU. 125 people are on ventilators tonight. Metro Health will be hosting drive through flu shot clinics in San Antonio this fall. The goal? to reduce the chance of hospitals becoming overwhelmed with a so-called twindemic. As the night team's Tiffany Huertas reports, a local pediatric office is already offering drive through shots to their patients. We will be giving is the quadrivalent uh, flu shot, which uh, protects uh, everybody six months and older against two flu A and two flu B vaccines. As flu season approaches, Metro Health is preparing to host drive through flu shot clinics. Registration can be done while they are still in the car and then they extend their arm out and we can give the shot while they are still, still sitting in the car. Assistant Director of Metro Health, Dr. Anita Kirian, says they are still finalizing where where the locations will be, but says they will be free. It's very, very important to get your flu shots so you can minimize those unnecessary medical visits that could lead to hospitalization and that could eventually lead to further strain on our healthcare system. Staff at Heritage Pediatrics are getting ready to have a drive through flu clinic next week. The more people we vaccinate, the less flu there is in the community, the less healthcare resources have to go to taking care of flu so we can manage COVID if we were to see another wave as we go into the, the fall um, um, and the winter. Dr. Carrion says both COVID-19 and the flu have similar symptoms, including fever, cough, shortness of breath, runny nose, and sore throat. But if you have COVID-19, you will have loss of taste or loss of smell. Kirian says people who have recovered from COVID-19 can get the flu shot. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Working out the kinks. Leaders at two rural school districts in Medina County say the first week of school had some hiccups. The night team's Patty Santos tells us how technology put everyone to the test. About half of Divine ISD's 1,900-plus student population showed up for in-person learning this first week of school. But balancing them and those doing remote learning was a task. Passwords and usernames and stuff just for Google itself, you know, even though we were somewhat accustomed to this in the spring, it looks a lot different than it does. One issue, a high demand for computers meant the district couldn't give each student their own computer, forcing some siblings to share. We got at least three devices to the families that had five in a household. We got at least 
two devices to all of the four student in the household. The district expects a thousand Chromebooks to arrive by October. I think uh, the word that we're putting on our shirt for next year is we are flexible, flexibility. Next door at Natalia ISD, it was all remote learning for its 1,000 students, and technology issues were similar. You know, you have trouble with passwords and logging on and getting knocked off and um, ac internet access during the week. Each student had a computer device, but the district is waiting on additional hotspots. The superintendent says they're taking it day by day. It's a learning um, process for not just the students, but for our staff as well. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. If there are people out there who need our help. Laura may be long gone, but residents impacted by the hurricane still need assistance through a partnership with our KSAT community, the American Red Cross, holding a relief phone bank right now. There's still time to give less than an hour left. If you want to contribute, call the number on your screen, 855-678-4483. You can also make an online donation. We have a link to that on our website. The phone bank will continue until 11 o'clock tonight. Still to come on the night beat, the ongoing pandemic has helped people find new ways to connect. Why a local group of pet owners says it's beneficial to interact with the community. And coming up in our KSAT Q&A segment, we talk with a member of the San Antonio Food Truck Association and check in on how they are surviving during this pandemic. Parents looking to connect or looking for help during this pandemic are turning to a local social media page. Membership on the Pet Parents of SATX Facebook page, monitored by Animal Care Services, has doubled since the pandemic started. The Night Team's Patty Santos tells us about the support pet parents are finding. <laughs> Because of the quarantine, whiskey gained a few pounds, and so I passed. I started getting worried. Carolina Ingram and her dog Whiskey have found support on the Pet Parents SATX Facebook page. She joined in March when she was looking for camaraderie and advice. I guess to meet more pet parents, like sometimes you feel crazy, like doing, like talking to your dog, or I don't know, treating them like they're actually like baby humans. Animal Care Services says the page membership went from about 500 to over. 1100 since the start of the year. Now, especially people that are working from home, they're able to spend time with their pets more. So they're able to share more pictures of them or see how to keep the, their pets entertained, um, activities to do with their pets, and they're able to use that group as a resource for that. <laughs> The space is meant to build a local community of support for new pet parents with those with more pet knowledge, veterinarian knowledge, training, even pet sitting help. And it's not limited to just dogs and cats. It's led by community members and sharing the conversations they want to talk about when it comes to their pets. The hope is that the group continues to grow so that in turn more pets are kept happy, safe and healthy at home. If they're looking for information as well, um, maybe we're not vets, but we do have a lot of experience, especially when we have raised them since they were puppies. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. We adopted Aww. a pet mm -hmm. yeah, you during did. the pandemic, mm -hmm. a dog, and you know, he's fit in Brings fine. Brings lots of joy, I'm sure. Now, what's that, three now? Yeah. Did it, three? Yeah. Finn is his name, and he's growing like crazy. He's already way bigger than we thought he was going to get. So every time a child leaves for college, you get another dog. To yeah, exactly. Place. Now my dogs outnumber the yeah. kids at home. Yeah, yeah. We have a unique situation when it comes to dogs. We sort of have a dog. Yeah. Sounds weird, and we we uh, sort of have two others because we share a back gate with our neighbors who have three. Decided to put a fence. We decided to put a gate in there, and Dixie, the little Chewiner dog spends most of the day at our house. Yeah. She has visitation yeah. rights. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> shared custody, yes. Yeah, it's a common law dog yeah. that we right. have. Yeah, shared custody. And then she'll go home at night, sometimes. Anyway, all right. Moving on here, another hot day today, very sticky and humid over the weekend and a weather pattern shift will happen probably in the middle of next week, trimming back temperatures and giving us a sliver of hope for some rainfall. So let's get to it. Take a look at our day today. Woo wee, 104 the high. Now the record though is 110, so we were far from that, but we were also far above average. We were nine degrees above the average and this morning we started the day at nearly 80 degrees. 
High temperature in New Braunfels was 106. Del Rio broke a record making it to 108 in Catula, had a high of 107. Our efforts paid off this afternoon during the peak stress on our power grid, 3 to 7 p.m. We saved almost 200 megawatts of energy and get ready for another CPS Power Saver Day coming on Monday as people get back to work and school. Hey, we're still in the 90s to upper 80s. 91 New Braunfels, 91 Port SA. Castroville at 94 and hello this year 93 degrees. Del Rio just shy of the century mark. It's 10 o'clock and it's 98 degrees still in Del Rio and Creasel Springs and Catula not far behind at 95. Not only that, it's humid and the humidity is really increasing again tonight. Dew points up and down I-35 already into the 70s. So you factor that in and here in town, it feels like 102, right? 10 o'clock and it feels like 102 outside and most of South Texas we have heat indices right now, right around the century mark. So high temperatures this weekend, still a little above 100. But when you factor in the humidity, it's going to feel a lot hotter. We'll get into that in a moment. But notice how the afternoon air temperatures do start to drop off by the middle of next week. That's going to be as a result of a little shift in our upcoming weather patterns. So the remnants of what was Hurricane Laura, you see the spin here. Uh, that's moving it through Kentucky, moving into the mid-Atlantic states and taking all of its rain with it. We have the big blue H, the upper level high that's really in control of our weather right now. And the upper level high is going to be suppressed and it's going to weaken a little bit in the days to come. You're not going to notice a difference this weekend, but by the middle of next week, the door is going to be open for a disturbance and it looks like we'll have a little upper level system move in by Wednesday and that's when temperatures will be trimmed back a bit and also our next chance of rain. All right, here we go. Get ready for more of the same this weekend. Hot and very humid. You factor in the humidity. It's going to feel like it's between 106 and 112, both Saturday and Sunday afternoons. We still have a heat advisor that remains in effect through tomorrow. Monday and Tuesday, very similar. Highs right near 100 and still very humid out there. Then there's that little shift by the middle part of the week. We're starting to see in the longer range more of a September-like pattern starting to creep in. So something to, to keep an eye on. Yay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adam. All right, it's here. Yes. You know, Stephen Cavazos gave us just a little hint. Ooh. He was talking about heat and humidity. He was, it was yeah. hot. Yeah. It was on fire out in Lavernia yeah. earlier today, and the highlights are on fire, too. This is the first week of big game coverage, and it did not let us down. Bears and Gobblers tonight at the Lavernia. We've got all the highlights. We have 12 games covered tonight all around the area, and this is the new normal coming up. And you're watching big game coverage on KSAT 12. Awesome. Sign of the times is a properly socially distanced Lavernia Bears band in the stands, along with the drill team masked up as the Bears kick off their 2020 season against the Quero Gobblers. Only one team captain each allowed for the coin toss of the big game at our big game coverage tonight. Lavernia is already up 7 to nothing when the Gobblers strike. Breck Ellaby to Deverick Mathis for the 13-yard touchdown. We're tied at 7 all. That's when the Bears attack. Gage Lowry, who had over 2,700 yards last year, finds Daryl Dulac for the 47-yard touchdown. The Bears are back in the lead. They that won't be the last time we hear from those two. Now 21-7 to when Lowry finds Dulac on the swing pass. He's bringing it all the way in from 45 yards out. And now the Bears are up 28 to nothing, and the dynamic duel is not done. Lowry to Dulac again. This time is for 65 yards. Lavernia goes up 35 to nothing. The final from Bear Country, I should say 35-7 to at that time. 55-21 is your final. Feels amazing. Uh, we came out fast, physical, and... I think that really won us the game. We hit them in the mouth from the uh, from the start, and they just they just backed down once once they knew that we weren't going to give up. Anytime you can start a season off in, in football, which is such a hard sport to play and win with physical good teams like Quero, you know it, it's a big statement for us tonight. All right, the Class 4A Division II state runner Wimberley Texans taking the field for their home opener tonight against Canyon Lake. But the visitors strike first. Late first quarter, James Bates takes a hand up, powers into the end zone for the one yard score. Hawks go up 7 0. Second quarter, Texans looking to answer, and Matthew Tippy finds Christian Marshall on the bubble screen. He takes off for a gain of 17 yards to get down inside the 20, and Wimberley punches in a few plays later. This time, Tippy takes it in himself for the three yard touchdown to tie the game at 7 apiece. Final from Wimberley, it is gone, and Wimberley holds off Canyon Lake. Look at that score 24 20. 
22. The cheerleaders taking the field of Bernie ISD Stadium. Greyhounds opening up against Beville Jones. Home team already on the move. Opening driver Sean Galloway finds Matt McCulloch on a quick hitter. Absorbs contact in the 17. Carries a defender 10 yards all the way down to the 7. That sets up this inside handoff to J.P. Castro, who gets the edge for the 7-yard touchdown. And the 7-0 lead. Let's check that final. 42-13. Bernie with the win. Fans getting their temperatures taken as they enter Bulldog Stadium tonight. Bandera hosting Poteet. Opening drive for the Aggies. Already near midfield on 3rd and 8. Alexander Lockabee draws the defense offside. Then it's Martin Ibarra for a 39-yard gain all the way down to the 12-yard line. Few plays later, Ernest Dabla weaves his way to the end zone for the 10-yard score. A 7-0 Poti lead. Let's go to the big game coverage scoreboard for the first time this year. There you see Poti with a big one over Bandera. 36-0. Wimberley holding off Canyon Lake. 24-22. Elsewhere in the first week, Laverne with a big win to open up against Quero and Bernie over BLDL Jones. 42-13. Say hello to the Divine Warhorse at Warhorse Stadium. Divine hosting defending state 2A champion Refurio. Bobcats in control late second quarter. 21-7. Caleb Hessel team fires deep for Jordan Kelly. He hauls it in before he touches the ground, though. Great catch for a gain of 23 yards. Next play at the 11-yard line. The snap gets away, but Antoine Gross picks up the loose ball, finds the seam, racing the end zone for the 11-yard touchdown. Refurio leads at the break, 28-7, and the final from Divine, 36-7, Refurio. Big things expected from the Jordan and Indians this year, ranked number four in 12 top 12 sub 5A rankings, but it's Natalia gets on the scoreboard first. Wyatt Woodson with a quarterback keeper. He's in from seven yards out to make it 6 to nothing Mustang, but the Indians give us the best play of the night. Handout goes to Nick Cordova, flips it to receiver Brett Berg, back to quarterback Cole Andrus, who finds Aiden Boyd for the 50-yard touchdown. Jordan takes the lead 7-6, and it has gone final 49-24. Jordan did. Pleasant and making their debut in Eagles Stadium and on their new turf against Hondo. Eagles back to punt, but the ball's bobbled. The kick is shanked, and the process is picked out of the air by William Winchester, and he's able to get down to the 30-yard line. Now, at the 15-yard line, Tommy Garcia takes a handoff. He's going to the right side to give the Owls a lead. The final from Pleasanton. Let's see if it has gone final. Hondo with a shutout, 31 to nothing. Temperature checks for everyone in Dilly tonight as the Wolves hosted the Sabinal Yellow Jackets in their first game of the season. The Yellow Jacks steam first. Handoff goes to Ethan Torres Ruiz, who cuts to the outside. He's coming down the near sidelines right at you here. He stiff arms his way to get into the end zone, dragging a defender for the 45 yard touchdown tackle, a two point conversion. 8 0 Sabinal. Let's head back to the big game cover scoreboard for that final. You see, they get the big win 24 to 6 over Dilly tonight. Hondo with a shutout over Pleasanton. 31 to nothing, spoiling their home debut. Divine falls to Refuer tonight, 36 to 7. And how about Jordan and over Natalia, 49 24. Up next, our big game coverage road trip, fan cam, more highlights and more scores. But first, let's listen to the Pleasant and Eagles marching band. Road trip as photographer Eddie Latigo headed to Poe to see what the Pirates are doing to make the walk the plank, the Battle of the Pirates. And then it's over to Nixon Smiley to check out the Mustangs hosting Bloomington with more. Let's take it live to our newsroom with more on these two games. And that's where we find our Larry Ramirez. Hi, Larry. Yeah, hello, Greg, and thank you very much. It is the Battle of Pirates tonight. Lytle at Poe. Poe is number five and 12's top 12 sub 5A rankings. Let's get to the first BGC road trip of the season. Number 79, senior Dalton Perry leading the Poth Pirates onto the field tonight. First quarter opening kick. The ball is up, but Lytle's Devin Caldera can't handle it. It goes right through his arms. The ball is loose, bouncing around on the ground. Players are scrambling for it, and Matthew Bunn comes up with it. Big time special teams play. Moments later, Poth cashes in. Quarterback Jude George runs to his right, then takes on a defender at the goal line, and he's in. Ten-yard touchdown run, and Poth leads 6 nothing. Now let's check out Bloomington Bobcats at Nixon. Smiley Mustangs, home team in control, up 30 to 7 late in the third quarter. Quarterback Xavier Adias keeps it himself, running right. He outraces the defense to the end zone. 30-yard touchdown, extra point, no good. But Nixon Smiley leads 36 to 7. Let's go to the scoreboard now and check out those final scores. Poth wins big time, 60 to 7, and Nixon Smiley is also victorious tonight by a final of 43 to 7. Nice wins for Poth and Nixon Smiley to start off the season. Greg, back to you. Thanks a lot, Larry. Time now for Fan Cam, where your fans help us cover one of the big games in a big game coverage tonight. Here's our own Jessica Hunt. A 
socially distanced band for this week's fan cam. Love it. The Three Rivers Bulldogs taking on the Fall City Beavers. First quarter, this one hot from the get-go. Jackson Pipes fakes the handoff, keeps it, goes around the line of scrimmage, and he could go all the way. He does. Beavers take a 7-0 lead, but the Bulldogs respond. Rigoberto Sanchez powers his way through the middle, running at an angle and dives just inside the pylon in the first quarter. And as fan cam departs nearing the end of the first quarter, score is currently tied at seven. From Three Rivers, Jessica Hunt, KSAT 12 Sports. All right, thanks a lot, Jessica. Cornerstone opening their season on the road against perennial powerhouse Cal Allen. Both teams paying tribute to Wildcat kicker Gabriel Cooley, who was killed in a stabbing this week by bringing out number 80 jerseys. An amazing show of solidarity. To the game now, Crusader strike first. Lucas Coley, the Arkansas commit, steps up to avoid the pressure, takes off up the middle, then angles to the near side, avoids a tackle, stays in bounds. He's gone 74 yards in the house in the quick 7 0 lead. Get this major upset. Cornerstone with the win 24 20 over powerhouse Cal Allen. Let's take a look at some more final. In Jessica's game, there you see it. 41 to 20 over three rivers is Randolph over Harper, 28 to 8. Randolph on the road. Carrizo Springs falling to Valley, 52 14. Blanco over Yorktown, 48 to nothing. In the first week is Comfort shutting out bracket, 42 to nothing. Rock Springs over Center Point, 44 to 3 for tonight. And a couple more. Cornerstone with a big one over Cal Allen, 24 20. El Campo defeats Gonzalez tonight, 35 to nothing. Not bad for the first week of high school football in San Antonio and South Texas. The first of what we hope are many more to come. Many more until January now. Yeah, thanks, Greg. You got it. We'll be right back. It's time for our KSAT Q&A where we can dive a little deeper into some of the issues and the subjects that people are facing these days. And one of them, of course, coronavirus and the pandemic and a lot of local businesses. We're joined by Pearl Flores, who is a member of the San Antonio Food Truck Association. She owns the food truck Grouchy Mamas. Did I say that right? Yes, sir. Okay, talk about the pandemic and the effect it's had on the food truck industry. Well, it's truly devastating. It's taking away a lot of our lunch spots that we had. A lot of them had to cancel because they've gone from working at home. So with that, we've lost a lot of that. We've lost big events, lots of the big events, Fiesta, um, anything you did for Oktoberfest, all of that has already been canceled. So it's been pretty rough. Have businesses, no matter what the industry is, have all had to adapt in order to survive all of this. So how has your business had to make changes in order to try to stay in business during all of this? Um, we started doing more neighborhoods, more HOAs and everything. They were bringing out trucks more to give everybody a chance to make money. And, you know, some of these places are kind of far, so you don't really see restaurants for like miles so it was convenient talk also about some new uh, restrictions that have been put in place and there are some new rules when it comes to bars and how they can reopen if they serve food so are bars partnering with food trucks so they can reopen and make that happen yes you can reopen if you if the bar pulls an FB license, which is the food and beverage license, and they can pair up with the food truck to be able to do that. The food truck has to have a certain amount of sales to the bar sales to be able to do that. But that's hope. That's hope. But the bars also are going to have to push the issue that the food has to be bought because without them, they can't open. Right. Because they're, they're considered restaurant right now with the food and beverage. And, and the food truck industry itself is already a unique one. You know, it's something that is certainly mobile. It's not something that is a brick and mortar location. So you don't have patrons going inside an establishment. Has that been an advantage at all when you're talking about customers who are concerned about COVID-19 and perhaps want to be able to get their favorite foods, want to be able to have a moment out of the house and be social, but they don't want to be uh, somewhere inside and confined with others? Yes, I mean, you can find the food trucks. You can look up any food truck that you like, and most of them are doing contactless um, 
service, which is most of us use Square. So they have a little thing where you just put your card in there and it reads and you don't ever have to touch money, do anything. And they place orders ahead of time. So a lot of us have adapted to those things. Is there a website? I mean, can we go to the San Antonio Food Truck Association website and find out where a particular food truck is going to be? Or, I mean, is there is there a, a, a sense of community that's kind of come together to help each other out through this? Um, you can go to the Food Truck Association website. The members are the only ones that will show up there. And there's tons of food trucks, obviously. And there's other sites that are doing where they're promoting the food trucks. So you just follow your food trucks and they'll be able to post. They post their schedules and you'll be able to see where they're going to be for the week and stuff. What is your business right now compared to what it was before, let's say, March? Oof. I've probably lost 80 percent. Wow. Are there other businesses that aren't able, that haven't been able to survive? Yes. Some people are starting to um, see the effects really bad and they're starting to sell their businesses right now. Wow. Just another effect of this pandemic. Uh, certainly one that so many are still waiting through all the challenges of. And we appreciate your time and, and taking oh, the time you. to explain some of the obstacles that you're still facing and still trying to overcome. Pearl Flores, owner of Grouchy Mama's Food Truck and board member of the San Antonio Food Truck Association. Thanks so much for being with us. Hey, Pearl, before you go, I, I, I mean, we talk about buy local, you know, help local restaurants, things like that. Are you going to be any place particular? Is Grouchy Mama's going to be anywhere particular? this weekend? Um, this weekend, we are in a, a private HOA, which is a gated community. Next week, we took the week off because of Labor Day, but there's plenty of trucks out there that are probably still working because um, a lot of them, that's what they, that's all they really have is just their business. So go to I your, am fortunate go ahead. enough to have my husband who is retired military and everything. So we were able to survive because of that. Yeah. a lot of stuff but so, a lot of people don't have that same option so go to the san antonio food truck association website find your food truck that interests you and support it yes and also i run a, a page on facebook which is called um dude where's my food truck and a lot of food truck <laughs> post their schedules where they're going to be what time they're going to be open and so we've been trying to push that to help support the food trucks to get their names out there show their schedules and see what they're where they're working at so that people can support Proof. dude where's my food truck we got to repeat that again Not that i think that's i love that someone title. Will forget yeah an easy look up on facebook pearl thanks so much for your time thank you y'all have a great evening you too, you too. we'll be right back Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. And now a tropical depression. Laura is still moving its way across the south towards the Atlantic Ocean, leaving behind a trail of destruction from the Gulf Coast into Arkansas. At least 13 people have been killed across Texas and Louisiana. Camila Bernal is in hard hit Louisiana with the latest. We've never experienced a, a category four. Homes and businesses demolished across Lake Charles, Louisiana. My brother across the street has no home to come back to. The town is mostly without power or water after several treatment plans sustained heavy damage. They are not alone. Hundreds of thousands are without power in Louisiana, Texas and Arkansas. This as Laura downgraded from a hurricane continues to cause destruction. Laura made landfall in Louisiana early Thursday morning as a Category 4 hurricane. Now the focus is turning to the cleanup. You know, it's very overwhelming, you know, and, you know, my in-laws, they live here. Uh, you know, it's for his pro that, that, that property has been in his family for since the 40s. Laura's ferocious winds ripping roofs off houses, tossing cars around and turning some buildings into matchsticks. It wasn't a howling, it was more like a screaming. You could actually hear the uh, the shingles being ripped off the, uh, the house. And while coastal regions were mostly spared of the predicted unsurvivable storm surge, residents who stayed behind say they have learned a lesson. When they say to leave, leave. 
because it's 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 going to be worth it in the long run. The storm may now be over, but the work is just beginning. A lot of work up in you know ahead. Take it a day at a time. Well, there is still a little over 10 minutes left to donate to the American Red Cross Hurricane Laura Relief Phone Bank. This event is in partnership with KSAT Community. If you want to contribute, call the number on your screen. That number is 1-855-678-4483. You can also make an online donation. We have a link on how to do that on our website. The phone bank will continue again until 11 p.m. tonight in just a few minutes. Doctors in Nevada sounding the alarm tonight, confirming what's believed to be the first coronavirus reinfection here in the U.S. This is officials crack down on young people partying across the country who could be helping drive the pandemic with little to no social distancing. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Tonight, a new warning from doctors in Nevada. The important message is that uh, if you've had this virus and you even had it, um, a response to it, that it doesn't mean you can't get it again. Researchers confirming the first known person here in the U.S. to be reinfected with COVID-19. The 25-year-old man first got sick in March but recovered, even testing negative twice. But 48 days after that initial infection, doctors say his symptoms came back and he was hospitalized, but with a different variation of the virus. This as authorities crack down on young people across the nation. Officials in Los Angeles filing criminal charges against two TikTok stars for allegedly hosting these packed house parties, ignoring local health orders. Videos circulating on social media like this one showing college parties with no social distancing. Arizona State University threatening to suspend students who party without proper safety protocols, with the school reporting more than 100 confirmed cases. I personally have been invited to a couple different uh, events. I haven't gone to any. Meantime, confusion over new testing guidelines from the CDC, which now say if you've been exposed but don't have symptoms, you don't necessarily need a test for COVID-19 in most cases, directly contradicting previous recommendations. There is no scientific basis for this change in policy. Uh, as the report said, about half of all spread happens from people who don't have symptoms. Many experts and local health officials are pushing back on the new guidance, and several states like California and New York say they won't be following it. But CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield is defending the decision, saying everyone who needs a test can get one, but that everyone who wants one may not need it. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Sad news to report tonight in the entertainment industry. Actor Chadwick Boseman has passed away. His publicist announced the news on social media that he died after battling colon cancer. Boseman was diagnosed back in 2016. He is best known for playing icons Jackie Robinson and James Brown on the big screen. He later became a household name when he joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe portraying Black Panther. He was 43 years old. And today, dozens of National Guard members from Alabama are headed to Wisconsin to assist with security during the ongoing protests over the police shooting death of Jacob Blake. These members deployed from Huntsville, Alabama. This week, Alabama's governor approved the National Guard, sending up to 350 military police officers. Protests have been happening in Kenosha, Wisconsin all week. Blake shot by police while they were responding to a domestic violence call. He remains paralyzed in the hospital tonight. Coca-Cola is offering to buy out around 4,000 of its workers in the U.S. along with Puerto Rico and Canada. Those that accept will reduce the number of involuntary layoffs at Coke. The severance program could amount to around $550 million. It also plans to reduce the number of operating units from 17 to 9. Coke's revenue has dropped 28 percent. About half of Coke's sales are from restaurants, movie theaters and large public gatherings like sporting events which have been closed or limited. Take a live look outside with live cam as we head into the weekend. Everything clear and 
still hot out there. Very hot yes. today. Clear, hot, sticky, mm -hmm. very muggy. The humidity is really surging back into place right now this evening as it usually does this time of day. Our aquifer took another hit today, this time down a little over half a foot, and we're about two and a half feet below the August average. But what's important now is the 10 day average at 655.9, still within the realm of stage one watering restrictions. And there is a shot at some rainfall by the middle part of next week. As for the pollen count, three allergens, mold, fall elm, and ragweed all on the low end. All right, let's talk about our heat today. We did a good job between 3 and 7 p.m. We saved an, an estimated 195.4 megawatts of energy, enough to power 39,080 homes for one hour this afternoon. Get ready for another power saver day on Monday as the heat and humidity is still going to be here, but people get back to work and school and their daily activities. So look across the state. By and large, above 100, 107 for the high in Abilene, Amarillo 105, El Paso 104. We're all in this together today. Far East Texas, not quite as hot. They actually had some showers there and some cloud cover. But Del Rio, that was a record high temperature of 108 earlier this afternoon. Right now, we're still right around that 90 degree mark. 88 in San Antonio and New Braunfels. Kerrville's 86, 90 in Hondo, 95 Catula, and yeah, you can't miss the Del Rio rating of 98 degrees still at this hour. Here's the key though, the humidity. I mean, it is just thick in the air right now. These dew points are increasing the southeasterly breeze, surging that humidity back into place from the Gulf of Mexico. I think we'll all be waking up to dew points in the 70s by tomorrow morning. So another very sticky day. And even at this hour, when you factor in the humidity, it feels like we're well into the 90s and even near 100 as you get to the Rio Grande. So let's talk about our weather pattern. There will be a little bit of a shift as we get into next week. Remnants of Laura now moving through Kentucky, bringing with it some good rainfall. And even parts of the panhandle getting clipped by some showers. Now the upper level high, the big blue H, it's the primary influencer of our weather right now. And it will be for a few more days, but it's going to weaken and then just get pushed westward and set up basically on the west coast of the U.S. That opens the door for some disturbances and it looks as though we could just get one. A nice dip in the upper level flow. That's what we like to see in the upper level steering flow and that could bring us our next chance of rain by the middle part of next week and trim back temperatures a bit. But tomorrow morning at sunrise we're looking at Upper 70s, near 80 degrees. Pleasanton 77 at sunrise. Hondo as well and Eagle Pass at 79. Then by the afternoon, we do this all over again tomorrow. Above 100 by 2 to 4 degrees. And when you factor in the humidity, it's going to feel like it's 106 to 112. Timberwood Park about 101 along with Bernie. Castorville 103 tomorrow. Elmendorf 103. And Lavernia about 102. This continues all weekend long. And again, the main thing is that heat index in the afternoon up to 112 in some places. Ugh. So a heat advisory is still in effect for tomorrow. That 30% chance of rain comes on Wednesday. We're going to have more coming right up. This week we saw two hurricanes head toward the U.S. coast, but only Laura caused significant damage, and we had crews following its path. And with another police-involved shooting in this country, the topic of defunding SAPD resurfacing. Here's more in the Night Beat in Review. Sky 12 over downtown where several hotels are housing hurricane evacuees here in San Antonio. Earlier, there were long lines to get into those hotels. The evacuees have been checking in throughout the day, seeking shelter. Families coming by bus and others coming in their own vehicles. They are right at the edge of Texas and Louisiana in Orange, Texas. Justin. Hey there, guys. Uh, and yes, we are right on the border of Texas and Louisiana here. Steven, what has happened there in the last few hours? Are you still seeing the long lines? Well, Steve, EC is pretty empty right now here outside Freeman Coliseums, but local leaders had hoped that they would not have to utilize a field hospital here at the Coliseum. Tiffany, are there still people out there right now? There's a lot of people out here. More than 2,100 people have been processed here. And check this out. This has been the sight to see the whole day. The parking lot completely full. And if you walk with me down this way, down Gambler Road, just take a look at this massive line that goes down the street and wraps around the block. This storm is almost moving due north. So it's going to move probably right up Sabine River. Oh, <laughs> that's not good. 
Yeah, that was a transformer that blew about 100 yards behind our crew. Not to worry, both Justin and Billy had scoped out the area beforehand to make sure they were well away from power lines during the coverage. While it did cause a scare, they are both safely headed back home tonight. A black jogger mistaken for an assault suspect first placed in jail earlier this week, now just released on bond tonight after spending two days behind bars. That's a story we first shared with you on the six o'clock news. While he wasn't the man police were looking for, he's now facing two felony charges. But the mayor is now making his voice heard in the matter. In a tweet that links to our story on ksat.com, Mayor Ron Nurnberg said, as, quote, I am seeking a full accounting of this incident, which is currently under investigation. We have to approach the situation seriously because every single resident deserves fair and equitable treatment from their city. While Hurricane Laura was making landfall, a team of nurses were preparing to conquer the storm while taking care of babies in the NICU. 20 nurses stayed behind in Lake Charles, Louisiana. They cared for 19 babies in their NICU. Some of them were on respirators and ventilators and others had been born extremely premature. The babies have since been transferred to other hospitals across the state because the hospital was still without water as of Thursday night. Mm. Well, here she is, the Transportation Security Administration's cutest canine of 2020. Actually, 2020 marks the nationwide contest second official year. A fun way to honor the more than 1,000 canine security teams patrolling America's airports. This is five-year-old Kayla. She earned the title by getting the most likes on social media. She helps her handler screen for potential explosives at Honolulu International Airport. Does she get like a crown or a sash? Sure, extra, or extra doggy treats. Something, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like it. Good night. It'll be hot and sticky this weekend. Have a great weekend, everybody. Good night.